Hey, I saw you walking with a guy at the grocery store the other day. Oh, you saw that? That's my husband. That's your husband? He didn't seem too happy. Weren't you being a little rough with him? Oh, that's not violence. That's how I show affection. It looked like you were hitting him. Are you sure that's okay? Oh, it's fine. That's just how we are as a couple. No, even in a marriage, violence isn't acceptable. Ugh, what do you care? It's our relationship, not yours. My husband needs a little push sometimes or he won't do anything. It's like those old TVs. Most kids today don't even know what an old TV is. But people aren't TVs. You can't just hit someone. Your husband looked like he was in pain. Ugh, what's your problem? If my husband and I are okay with it, then why do you care? But is your husband really okay with it? He seemed like he hated it. How would you know? Did he tell you he hated it? I didn't hear him complain. So what makes you think you can judge? I'm not judging you, but it's hard to ignore when I see something like that. Well, keep your opinions to yourself. It's really annoying. I'm just pointing out that what you're doing seems wrong. Wrong? My husband never complains or gets mad, so I can do whatever I want. In fact, I'm having an affair with a super hot younger guy. What? That's definitely going to lead to a divorce. Nope, my husband doesn't care. He never gets mad about anything. He's probably furious. You should stop before it's too late. Ugh, mind your own business. I do what I want. I'm even planning another getaway with my lover. That's a terrible idea. You're going to regret this. Leader. Yasmin, your husband was rushed to the hospital. What? You're exaggerating. He'll be fine. He's tough. He's in critical condition. I saw the accident happen, so I went with him to the hospital. He's in really bad shape. That's impossible. He's physically strong. There's no way something like this could happen to him. You can't assume that. What are you going to do? Where are you right now? I'm at the hospital. Where are you? I'm on a trip with my lover, like I said. Are you serious? Your husband is unconscious and you're off having fun? Ugh, whatever, I didn't expect this to happen. Can you take care of my husband for me? What? What about you? I'm too busy with my trip. You handle it. Are you crazy? He's your husband. Yeah, but I've been planning this trip forever. Not letting it get ruined just because he's in the hospital. Oh, that's awful. He's your husband. And you're choosing an affair over him? My lover's way hotter. My husband's weak and indecisive. Then why did you marry him? I thought he was a good choice at the time. Now I couldn't care less. Honestly, I'm thinking divorce might be easier. That's the worst thing you've said so far. If your husband heard this, he'd be furious. Oh, he won't get mad. He never does. I'm actually considering divorcing him. I bet he'll just sign the papers without even asking for alimony. You've got to be kidding. You've reached a new level of selfishness. I just want a fun life with a hot guy. What's wrong with that? It's my life, so I'm going to live it the way I want. But you're married. You should at least care for your husband. Ugh, you sound like one of those old-fashioned husbands. I've got my own way of thinking. Stop trying to push your beliefs on me. It's not just me. Anyone would say you should take care of your husband. Ugh, here we go with a normal argument again. You're trying to make me the bad guy. Are you sure you're okay with all this? What's that supposed to mean? If you have something to say, just say it. Well, your husband just regained consciousness. He's talking now. What? He's awake? Good. At least if he dies, I might get an inheritance. Even now, you're saying horrible things. Do you realize your husband knows everything? What do you mean? I've been showing him all of our texts. What? How could you do that? That's a total invasion of privacy. I thought he deserved to know the truth. <sighs> I'm not even worried. My husband never gets mad. He's such a pushover. Well, that's changing. He's furious right now. <gasps> no way. My husband wouldn't get mad at me. He's shaking with anger. That can't be true. He never gets mad. He said he's had enough of you taking advantage of him. He's finally done with you. What am I supposed to do? Please tell him not to leave me. I'm really a good wife. You should figure that out on your own. Why is this happening to me? You're with him at the hospital. Can't you help me out a little? I'm here because I care about your husband, not for your sake. Ugh, you're so annoying. Just make sure he doesn't ask for alimony, okay? He's definitely asking for alimony. He says he's going to make you pay for everything you've done. No way! This is a nightmare. It's all your fault. You shouldn't have taken him to the hospital. 
So you're saying it would have been better to leave him unconscious? Exactly, this is all because of you. You've ruined my life. No, you ruined your own life. You've been taking advantage of your husband for too long. This isn't fair. I'm just doing what I want with my life. I shouldn't have to pay for this. You ignored your husband's feelings. Now you have to face the consequences. I won't pay alimony and I won't get divorced. Tell him that. He's already talking to a lawyer. He's determined to divorce you. How can he do this to me? I've given everything for him. He says all you've given him is misery. He's had enough. This is so unfair. Maybe you should have thought about that before treating him this way. Yasmin tried calling me several times after that, but I ignored her. Her husband went through with a divorce and she was forced to pay him a large alimony. She then tried to marry her lover, but he was only in it for fun and left her. Yasmin was abandoned by everyone, even her family. I still occasionally hear from her ex-husband who thanks me for helping him. He's living a much happier life now. Hey, isn't the apartment you live in falling apart again? No, it's not falling apart. You must be imagining things. Oh, really? I don't know how you can stand living in that place. Don't you get cockroaches? Yeah, sometimes, but I don't really mind. Ugh, that's unbelievable. You should take better care of your life. Just because there are cockroaches doesn't mean I'm getting sick. If you live in a place long enough, they're bound to show up. That's just your opinion. Living in my luxury high-rise, I've never seen a cockroach in my life. Life here is just so much more enjoyable. Well, that's nice, but your lifestyle is thanks to your husband working hard, not your own efforts. That's not true. I'm living this life because of my beauty and charm. Most other moms are married to a boring man, but I'm married into the winning team. It doesn't matter who you marry as long as it's a decision based on love. You shouldn't look down on others' marriages. Oh, you're just trying to justify your own regrets. Don't you really want a divorce? Oh, don't be ridiculous. My husband and I get along just fine. Plus, my husband's not a boring man. But living in that rundown apartment, he can't be making much. A man should earn more than that. I work too, so we have plenty of income. And honestly, a high rise just doesn't feel comfortable to me. Ah, classic excuse. You're just telling yourself that to cope with your situation. Uh, say whatever you want. Even though I live in an old apartment, I can still afford high-end sushi. High-end sushi? That's wasted on you. You don't deserve it. Well, my husband and I enjoy it. Too bad. That sushi is for me. You can't have it. What are you even talking about? A few days later. I went to that high-end sushi place you were talking about. Poor people should stick to cheap sushi. High-end sushi is pearls before swine for you. We went in using your reservation, so just give it up. I'm your husband's boss. Wait, what? <sighs> you didn't know? I run several companies from home. What? Then why are you living in that rundown apartment? Because I don't like fancy offices. I prefer working from a simple home office. I can't believe this. Well, since you stole my sushi reservation, I think I'll have to fire your husband as punishment. Wait, you can't fire him over that. Do you know how long it takes to get a reservation at that sushi place? I didn't know you had to make a reservation. It's a six month wait. My husband and I were really looking forward to it and you just took it away. Wait, it was that long of a wait? I didn't realize it was so serious. Oh, it's serious. How dare you steal something we waited so long for. But it wasn't entirely my fault. My husband wanted to go and I couldn't stop him. That's a weak excuse. Why don't you let me speak with your husband then? No, wait. He doesn't know I stole the reservation. So you lied to him too? Ugh, unbelievable. Not only will I fire him, but I'll also make sure you pay for the reservation you stole. Pay? I'll cover the cost of the meal, but is that really necessary? It's not just about the meal. It's the time you wasted by taking our reservation. Isn't that a little extreme? You make more money than we do, so why do you care so much? It's about principle. I want to teach you a lesson. Oh, you should be kinder. Why are you being so harsh? You're the last person who should talk about kindness. Enjoy the sushi. But remember, once you walk out of that restaurant, there's no going back. You're joking, right? 
Please don't fire my husband. I'll do anything to make it right. No, it's time you face the consequences of what you've done. A few hours later. My husband called you, right? Yeah, he did. He begged you not to fire him, didn't he? Yep, but I'm still going through with it. You're so cruel! It's not cruelty, it's justice. He's been slacking off at work anyway. You can't fire him just because of that! Well, there's also the matter of the missing money from his expense reports. What? Missing money? Every time he buys something for the company, there's extra money unaccounted for. We've been meaning to bring it up. Are you saying my husband's been embezzling? It's possible. If he admits it, maybe I'll reconsider firing him. Fine, I'll ask him. He admits it. Well, then it's settled. He's definitely fired. Wait, didn't you say you wouldn't fire him if he admitted it? I never said that. Anyone who embezzles is getting fired, no question. This is awful. Your husband is the one who committed a crime. And you stole my sushi reservation. You have no right to complain. But this feels like revenge. It's not revenge. You need to learn that actions have consequences. You've been looking down on other moms from your high rise, but now you'll know what it's like to be in their shoes. No, I loved living in my luxury apartment. Please don't fire him. Too late. You'll have to move out now that he's unemployed. Please, I'll do anything. You should have thought about that before. Grace's husband was fired, and they had to move out of their luxury apartment. He couldn't find another job, so they had to rely on part-time work to get by. Grace now lives in a cheap apartment, struggling to maintain a lifestyle she can't afford. She still craves the luxury she once had, but it's out of reach now. As for me, I finally got to enjoy that high-end sushi, and it was worth the wait. Hey, guess what? The other day I got $50 from Mary. Isn't that awesome? Wait, you got $50? How did that happen? It's exactly like it sounds. I've always done things to help others, so I guess this is karma. I'm pretty sure you haven't exactly been doing things to help others. Uh, how dare you? I take care of others more than anyone I know. Fine, fine, just tell me how you ended up with $50. Well, it was simple. I went shopping with one of the moms, and I told her I'd cover the bill if she let me money. She gave me $100, so I kept the $50 change as a service fee for handling the checkout. Are you serious? Keeping $50 as change? You're out of your mind. Come on, when you see that much money in front of you, it's hard not to want it. No, it's not. You need to give that money back to her. Nope. She didn't even ask for the change, so clearly she doesn't care. If she's not complaining, I didn't do anything wrong. And don't be ridiculous. If you keep this up, it's going to come back to bite you. You're always so dramatic. Oh, by the way, I heard you have a membership to that exclusive grocery store, right? I've always wanted to go there. Mind if I tag along next time? No way. You just pull the same stunt on me, wouldn't you? Oh, stop it. I just want to see what the store's like. Fine, you can come, but that's all you're doing, just looking. If you try anything funny, I'm not going to forgive you. Relax, it'll be fine. A few days later. Hey, Jane, I just finished at the checkout. I'll keep the extra cash as my fee. There's over $100 left, so I'm thinking of getting some steak on the way home. You're going to jail for fraud. I told you not to do this, and you still went ahead and did it? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. What do you mean, fraud? What do you think? You said you cover the checkout, but you never mentioned keeping the change. Plus, I specifically told you to return the extra money. Oh, did you? I must have missed that. Don't act like you forgot. You agreed, remember? Fine, but you gave me $300. Why would you give me so much money if you didn't want me to keep the extra? It's a membership store, so things can be expensive. I didn't expect there to be that much leftover. Well, you should have given me less then. With that much leftover, of course I'd want to treat myself. No one thinks like that. It's just you. And it's still fraud. I expected you to give me the change back, but now I see that's not happening. Wait, wait. I haven't spent the change yet. I'll give it back. 
Just don't report me for fraud. Too late. I have the texts to prove it. I've already contacted the police. Plus, I've talked to the other moms you've scammed. We're all going to the police together. Wait, what? You can't do that. Why not? You've been stealing from everyone. We have plenty of evidence against you. This is ridiculous. It's just a little extra cash. Why should I get in trouble for that? $50, $100? It's not a little. That's called theft. Theft? I was just trying to make ends meet. I thought it was like a tip for running errands. Running errands? You're ridiculous. No one asked you to handle the checkout. You offered and now you're pretending it's a job? That's fraud. Plain and simple. Why are you treating me like a criminal? I'm not a thief. The other moms must be calling me that, though. They are. They're all calling you a thief and demanding their money back. Then why didn't they ask for it sooner? Some people are too polite to ask for their money back. And you know that, so you take advantage. You don't have to be so harsh. I'm kind of sorry, okay? Why are you getting angry? You're not the victim here. You're the one stealing from people. I'm not stealing. Anyone would keep extra cash if it's just sitting there. Well, we'll see if the police agree with you. No, please don't call the police. I don't want to get arrested. It's too late for that. I'm at the station now. Stay at the store until we figure this out. No way, I'm not staying here. What about the stuff you bought? It's still here. Don't think you're getting away with this. I'm not dealing with this. I shouldn't have to go through this over a few dollars. A few dollars? You've taken hundreds. That's theft, plain and simple. It's not theft. I just need a little extra money to get by. I didn't mean for things to get this bad. Oh, please, stop pretending to be the victim. You've been stealing and living off other people's money. It's over. Oh, wait. I'll give you half of what I've taken from everyone. Isn't that a great deal? Uh, are you serious? You think I'd take that offer? After all this, you still try to bribe me? You're unbelievable. I don't get it. Why won't you take the deal? Because it's wrong. You need to face the consequences of what you've done. Please, don't do this. I don't want to get arrested. After this, Sarah was arrested for fraud and had to pay a hefty fine to all the moms she has stolen from. I got my money back and Sarah became known as the thieving mom around town. Her reputation was ruined and she eventually left town after her husband divorced her. Now, she struggles to make ends meet, living off whatever little money she has left. The rest of us are enjoying shopping without her. And the moms have never been happier.